Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is the third part of dubious writings. And um, assuming that we still have the Bible, we won't be doing a lot of flipping of pages on this one uh, because the style of the uh, writer of the Gospel according to Luke is not like that of the guy who wrote the Gospel according to Mark. He did not depend on a lot of uh, passages from the Old Testament. Instead, what he wrote was a lot of stories and um, a lot of depictions of what is attributed to Jesus as regards the parables. So since he told a lot of stories here, what we're going to do is analyze the details of his stories and see uh, how seriously they can be taken. The first one that I think uh, is dubious here is in Luke chapter 4 verse 1 to 13. This is the passage that highlights the temptation of Jesus. It reads, And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for forty days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days, and when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all of the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him to you I will give all this authority and their glory for it has been delivered to me and I will give it to whom I will if you then will worship me it will be yours and Jesus answered him it is written you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve and he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you. And on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. What I see as a problem here is that as at the time of this event Jesus had not started calling upon his disciples. So Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights by himself and only after which the devil up appeared to him. So, the only two people that can give anybody the details of this event is either Jesus or the devil himself. And there is no way that is recorded that Jesus sat down his disciples to tell them this story. So how did the writer of the Gospel according to Luke have the information that he told us here. Was it made up? Or was it real? How did he know? If he was recording from eyewitness uh, point perspective, how did he know what happened between these two people way, way in the wilderness? Sounds like a dubious writer to me. The next one is in the same Luke chapter 4 and this one is uh, based off of Jesus being uh, rejected at Nazareth. Now if Na Nazareth existed during the time of Jesus or not is not <laughs> is not going to be what we're talking about in this video but we're just analyzing the writing but um here Jesus was basically trying to tell the people that he is 
he has been uh, foretold in the Old Testament and stuff. Well, let me let me just read from Luke 4 chapter 24 and he said truly I say to you no prophet is acceptable in his own hometown but in truth I tell you there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heavens were shut up three years and six months and a great famine came over all the land and Elijah was sent to none of them but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon to a woman who was a widow and there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha and none of them was cleansed but only Naaman the Syrian so basically he was trying to say that he started his ministry and he started uh, caring and cleansing people in other lands instead of his own land so when these people heard this let me continue from verse 28 when they heard these things all in the synagogue were filled with wrath and they rose up and drove him out of the town and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their, own, their town was built so that they could throw him down the cliff but passing through their midst he went away okay that's where the problem is uh, he was supposed to be thrown off a cliff so uh, after he said what he said which uh, angered the people in the synagogue they led him to a cliff and when he got when he got to the cliff they were supposed to throw him down the cliff you know execution style but he passed through their mist and slipped away the problem here is if the gospel writer which is the guy who wrote the gospel according according to Luke was there and he saw Jesus slipping away how come he was the only one who saw him slipping away that's one and if he wasn't there and the the mob who was who was trying to kill Jesus peace be upon him where the people or maybe somebody from that mob was the person telling this story and the story got to Luke and he wrote it down how come a member of the mob saw the person they were trying to execute slip slipping away and they did not say anything or did they admit to the writer of the gospel according to Luke that we were there and this man suddenly disappeared and we didn't see him anymore now mind you the writer here does not say that he miraculously disappeared he said he slipped through the crowd so how did this information get to you were you a witness and how come you were the only witness or did you help him escape and if you were not the witness who told you then the person who was trying to kill him and they watched and let him slip by this is why the series is called dubious writings and this will be the conclusion for dubious writings part three watch out for part four where we'll be discussing what is in the gospel according to matthew assalamu alaikum Barahmatullahi wa barakatuh.